Hi, this is Anne from Cards or Die Board Gaming. I'm here to talk to you about Spy Ring. Um, Spy Ring is one of the games that they have at the Abbey House Museum in their collection of retro and vintage games. It was made in 1965 by Waddington's and it plays two to four people. The objective of the game is to find all four of your secrets, which are hidden in safes in the embassies on the board. There are 16 different embassies and each one contains a secret. When there are none left in the embassies, then the game ends. Your other objective is to spell out code words using the secret cards that you collect during the game. The cards are worth one point each at the end of the game, unless you've spelt out a code name and it shows you the different code names for different countries, all of which are fish, but in different languages. And um, for instance, if I was to collect the cards that spelt fish in Russian, which is Reba, then uh, I would get four bonus points at the end of the game. Um, so yeah, your main aim is to collect secrets from the embassies and you can do that in one of four ways. You can enter the embassy with your spies, so you can come into the embassy, or you can radio your contact, each spy has a contact, or you can move next to another spy, so if a spy is in the street you can move next to them and steal from them that way, or you can spot other vulnerable spies and I'll explain that in a moment. The entering the embassy and moving next to spies are fairly straightforward. You roll the dice and you move your spy. Um, if I enter an embassy and I turn over the secret hidden within and it matches the colour of my spy, so if I had turned over a blue, I would keep it and I'm trying to collect all four of my colour. If it's a different colour, I can replace it either in the embassy that I've been in or I can pop it in another embassy if there's a space for it. Um, and again, moving next to a spy is just by rolling the dice. The other thing that I can do is establish radio contact with my contact. So to do that, I would need to roll a one. So, and then I would take my spy and I would insert the aerial inside his hat so that he can get a wireless connection with the contact. Once you've got your aerial in, you are vulnerable, which means that you can be spotted. So you get another roll of the dice, which allows you hopefully to hide. You can hide in these areas where you're shielded by the bushes. No one can move through the bushes and no one can see through the bushes. Um, and then I can either examine a secret that my contact is guarding or I can claim two secret cards. So my contact here, the yellow contact, is guarding this secret which is blue so that's no good to me. So again I can either pop it back in the Portuguese embassy or if there was a gap somewhere else say I can pop it somewhere else on the board. If I am spotted with my aerial in or if I'm spotted in one of these prohibited areas in pink, then someone can take one secret card from me. You're not able to spot other players while you've got your aerial in place, but you could move your contact into a position where they could spot for you. So if, while I've got my aerial in, the blue spy has his aerial in his hat, trying to establish contact with his agent, I can move my contact to here, onto the blue cross there, and spot him and steal a secret from him. Your contacts are only allowed to move in this area from the blue squares to the other blue square. Another quick way to move around the board and enable you to spot people and steal secrets from them is by using the manhole covers. So if this spy wants to come out here, they might move one, two, three, takes them to that one, and four takes them to there where they can spot my yellow spy there and steal a card from them. If the blue spy was here, they're actually in the line of vision so they can see both of them, so they would steal two secrets. All of your secrets are stored face up, so I can go ahead and have a good rifle through 
and try and collect the letters that I need to spell out the word that I'm trying to spell out. Your aerial is removed before you roll your dice for your next go, so it just stays in place for one round. You'll notice that all the words on the code cards are fish, so in all different languages. And it's quite interesting to note that some of the spellings or it looks like some of the pronunciations might be quite similar, so that's quite interesting. But the main thing that interested me was that fish was used as a code name at Bletchley Park in World War II. The Germans had called one of their wireless teleprinter transmission systems Sagerfisch, which means sawfish in German. So I'm assuming that that is why uh, the code name is always fish. Uh, I can't think of any other good reason anyway. So that is Spy Ring and I hope that you've enjoyed that short introduction. Thanks for watching. Bye.